TMS Software just published a new release of Flexel for .NET. In this release in particular, they added support for .NET 5 and Blazor WebAssembly. Just one caveat ahead. Microsoft pushed the ahead of time compilation into the next release of .NET. So anything that is included in Flexel that cannot be interpreted by IL is not going to be available. That means you won't be able to access all the features of Flexel using WebAssembly yet. Microsoft announced potential support next year. As a general rule of thumb, you can't use anything that requires rendering because rendering in Flexel is based on the Skia library and that is not available in WebAssembly right now. However, the following example shows that there is already a lot of potential in the current features supporting .NET 5. So let's jump right in. I create a new project using Visual Studio 2019 and as the new project type, I pick Blazor App. There's actually two kinds of Blazor apps out there. One is the client-side WebAssembly application, and the other one is the full-blown server application, which we're not gonna look at in this video, but in another video. So let's rename the project to Flexel example WebAssembly. When you click Create, you can still make modifications what kind of your project you actually want to create. First of all, make sure that .NET 5 is selected, and then we're going to select the Blazor WebAssembly app and not the full-blown Blazor server app. Finally, make sure that for simplicity to disable HTTPS. Now Visual Studio can create the project for you. It is adding a certain number of pages as a template so you can start right from there. We're going to modify the counter page, which usually is an example where you get a button and if you click the button which you see right here as html the button click calls the method increment count and the method increment count increases the counter variable current count which starts with zero and whenever you click the button the counter is increased here you can see that the path of the page is being set using the add page directive to keep this demonstration simple, we are going to modify this example with something that uses Flexel. But before we can actually use Flexel, we need to add it into our project. NuGet is the easiest way to do this in Visual Studio. And Flexel supports NuGet packages. So right-click the project and select Manage NuGet Packages. And instead of going to Install, you go to Browse. And on the right side, you don't select the package source nuget.org. No, you can select flexel.tmssoftware.com. How do you get this entry? Well, if you install Flexel on your system, you automatically get this entry. It's that easy. So you click that. And here you see you get TMS Flexel, Web Forms, and WinForms support. We need the TMS Flexel support. Click Install, and everything else is automatic. Just confirm with OK accept the contractual things, and there you go. After installation, you can check if it has been successful. You can expand the dependencies, node, packages, and there you see that TMS Flexel version 7.8 has been added to the project. So we close the NuGet tab, and then make modifications to the counter page. First of all, we need to use the class namespaces that Flexel requires. That being said, in order to add them, you type add using flexel dot core code completion is available using flexel dot xls adapter. Those are the two namespaces you need. And instead of counter, we're going to call it calculator. And we want to offer a universal calculator that allows us to enter an expression that is being evaluated by Excel and then the result is being returned. And we all know how comfortable we can do calculations with Excel and what kind of functions are available. And if you load a certain Excel document, you can even use custom built functionality inside of your expressions. So we are going to just say enter formula. And for that, we are going to use 
a input control. And the input control is bound to a property or a field variable inside of our code. And for that, we are going to call it txt formula. And we're going to close the input tag. And then we have to make sure that we show the result. So we're going to simply replace this with result. And we're going to call it txt result. And then, of course, we have to define those variables inside of our code. So private txt formula. And of course, it's of data type string. And the second one, we need private string txt result. So those are the two variables which are referenced here. Of course, we can initialize them if we wanted to, but this is fine. And instead of increment count, I'm going to say calculate result. And the on click calls calculate result instead. And here we actually make use of the capabilities of Flexel. So we define an Excel file. XLS file class, XLS equals new XLS file, and we want to create one worksheet, and we want to allow overwriting, so true, and XLS, and then we have the method recalc expression, and this allows us to actually pass on an expression that is evaluated or recalculated by the Excel engine. And for that, we pass txt formula. And of course, this has to be assigned to our txt result. And here it is where it gets a little bit tricky because this returns an object and we need a string. So we also have to call convert to string. And then we can call it like this. For whatever reason, the designer shows an error here but this is valid code that works. You can see it when you run the application. The browser opens up, the debugging session starts, and the template that is being used by the Blazor Rep Assembly template is being shown. And if we go to the counter page, we see the design that we just created with enter formula result. We can enter a formula equals five plus four and click me, the result is nine. And you can do complex calculations. For example, you can call cos cosinus of two times pi. Click me on the result is one. And the only thing missing so far is something like if somebody wrote pi like this, and I was thinking of food instead of the mathematical constant, click me. And you see an unhandled error has occurred. You see this also if you debug your application in the console you get all sorts of errors so the easiest thing to do is if you catch this exception right so let's just do that so here we are going to catch any potential exception so we're going to call try and here we're going to say catch and for simplicity reasons we're going to call any exception ex and here, of course, we have to add the braces as well. And what we're going to do is we're going to set the result to the error message equals ex dot message. That's it. Let's rerun this. And there you see, wonderful counter equals two times pi works fine. But as soon as we misspell pi, we now get the error message instead. So you have full control over that as well. So it's not something that if you use Flexel, you use the capability to catch exceptions. It's fully integrated into the .NET infrastructure. And now something that is very important to understand as the difference between the client-side execution and server-side execution or server-side requests. So this application is actually in the browser right now. It's not asking any server for the result of the formula. Everything is running inside of your browser at this stage. You can simply simulate this by copying the URL, opening a second 
browser completely independent paste it now the session is loaded into the browser not only the session the whole application itself is loaded in the browser and if you say equals five times five that's 25 and now we end the debug session in visual studio so we stop this and you can see the edge browser disappeared because the debug session ended so the application debugging session is no longer running but still five times 30 the application itself can still be used even with specific stuff that hasn't been used before like functions it's all still working however as soon as you try to reload it meaning you go back to the server it's no longer there because you know you stopped your session so WebAssembly is actually a mechanism that downloads the application into your browser and then everything is being executed client-side as long of course if your web assembly doesn't do any server-side calls but as long as you just stay on that one form inside of your web assembly application it's not necessary to go back to the server so you can execute your application even when there is service interruptions and stuff like that which is a major advantage of these web assembly applications so this is how easy it is to integrate Flexcell into a Blazor WebAssembly application using .NET 5 and Visual Studio 2019.